for a light bulb filament current versus delta V. And we had a curve. We, we didn't have a straight line this time. We had a bit of a curve, right? Because as the light bulb heats up, its resistance increases, so its slope decreases. So this would be non-homic. In this case, a light bulb filament. Now you could you could continue to apply more and more voltage across the light bulb, which would basically make the light bulb get brighter and brighter as more and more current through, but if the rate at which the light bulb is dissipating the energy into, into thermal and light energy is the same rate at which energy is being input, electrical energy, then it's reached kind of an equilibrium and the slope doesn't change anymore. So this would be kind of the operating temperature. Right, but you might reach a certain point where you burn up the filament and then the current would crash to zero, right? So that line couldn't uh, continue forever. But it's, it's non-linear in this region. Uh, slope is decreasing, which means the resistance is increasing. So resistance is a function of temperature. It becomes more resistive as the temperature uh, increases. All right. <coughs> Now these are this is a this is a resistor and a filament. Now there are other circuit elements that we could consider. So here's you know and there's a few and there's a few other ones. For instance, uh, a diode. Now you can see the current voltage characteristics for a diode. It's not well. This, it's definitely not ohmic. It's definitely more complicated. Uh, than a <coughs> light bulb filament, right? In that, really, what you have here, <coughs> well, it's the simplest semiconductor device that you can that you can build. Take a positively doped and negatively doped material, put them together. You get this barrier in between, which basically means <coughs> it acts kind of like a switch. Current can only flow one direction. That's very hard for current to flow the other direction. But, of course, it will break down after a certain point. All right, diodes. Now, there are other components. There might be an integrated circuit chip, right? So diodes, transistors, inductors. We've looked at resistors, both linear and nonlinear. You know, capacitors. Uh, yes? I'm uh, sorry, just going back to the original thing about the light bulb. Yes. Um, do we, when we find the resistance of a non-ohmic um, thing such as the filament, do we do it at the operating temperature? Is that where we get your resistance? 
or is it uh, the initial slope? Uh, okay, so how the question is really how long does it take a light bulb to heat up? Fraction of a second. If you turn a light bulb on, oh. this basically I well 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 basically what this is saying, what this curve is basically saying is the resistance will be different at different temperatures. If you have a really, really small voltage, really, really small voltage, the resistance is going to be very, very small because there's not much energy being input, so the slope is kind of steep. But if you apply more and more voltage to it, what's happening is it's getting hotter and hotter, so the slope is decreasing, decreasing, as resistance is increasing, increasing. But you're going to reach a point where Okay, it's not really going to get any hotter at that point, so it becomes somewhat kind of straight, but it'll break down at, at a certain point, right? Uh, uh, basically, the burn up. Yes. Uh, so the resistance would still be the slope at any point. Though. Yes, the resistance would still be the slope. Well, the, the slope is going to equal one over r. So if you put a light if you put a light bulb on a, a dimming switch, right, it's going to have a variable resistance depending on its operating temperature. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions here? Vote. All right. Now let's look at let's turn our attention to number three. And number three says two light bulbs are connected with the same potential difference across their terminals. Bulb one has a smaller resistance than bulb two. Uh, which bulb, so you want to answer these four questions. Which bulb has larger current? Uh, question about the power. Which bulb has more power delivered to it, and which one is uh, brighter? Okay, so take a moment. I want you to think about these. And basically, the circuit is basically this: the battery. This is bulb number one, and then bulb number two is connected to the same battery. Uh, and R1 is less than uh, R2. So you're just thinking about those four questions? Yeah, John? What kind of circuit is that parallel or series? Well, it's just a, well, this would be just a simple, well, it wouldn't be series or parallel because there's only one element. But it's a closed circuit, right? Both light bulbs would glow because they're connected across the potential difference of the battery. Like this. Yeah, but two separate circuits. And we're just asking a question about which one would have the larger current what about the power through the bulbs? Which one has more power and which one is brighter? Yeah, you can talk to your neighbor here what your prediction. <coughs>
power All right, let's discuss this here. Now, I've kind of built a schematic here using this simulation, both the two circuits. The one on the right would be bulb number two. Now, which bulb has more current going through it? Okay, bulb one. How do you know? Or why? <coughs> yes. Okay, and how does that help us here? Okay, excellent. So the first circuit draws more current because there's less of a resistance connected to it. So batteries are not a source of constant current, but uh, ideally a source of constant um, electric potential. Now, let's see. Let's actually go ahead and just measure the uh, current. So I'm going to connect a current meter. Point nine amps. And then the same thing here, let me measure the current. <coughs> All right, so less current. What about the uh, power? So how is the power related to the voltage across the bulb and the current flowing through the bulb? So power is the amount of energy per unit time that the bulb is dissipating, yes. So it's uh, the loss is equal to voltage times amps. Voltage times amps, right. So power we can write as I delta V. Current is measured in coulombs per second. And delta V is the number of joules per coulomb. So this is joules per second. So 1 watt is equal to 1 joule per second. Right, and if we combine this with Ohm's law, which says I equals delta V over R, we can write this as delta V squared over R. Or we could also write this as I squared R. That would be the power dissipated by the light bulb. So now we, since they both, light bulbs have the same potential drop across them, the one with the larger current is going to be dissipating uh, more power. So the energy drop across both of them is the same, right? But this one has more charge per unit time that's crossing it, so it's dissipating more, more power. So bulb one is the brightest. All right. Now, what happens? So, any other any questions? Kind of to clarify this one, number three here. Before we move to the next. Yes. It's the brightest because it has the most power flowing through it. It's the brightest because, well, brightness is going to be a measure of power. Really. Now, when energy is being dissipated in a light in, a, in an incandescent light bulb, there's a lot of heat that's generated as well. So it's only a, it's only actually incandescents are not very efficient, so there's a lot of thermal energy to get really hot. Right? We don't really want the heat; we just want the light. So that's why, for instance, LEDs would be more energy efficient in converting all that electrical <coughs> energy into light energy. But the power that's dissipated here would be just the since we know. This one has more current. It, this, this one has less resistance, so it's drawing more current. And it has the same potential drop. Uh, it's dissipating more uh, uh, energy, basically. So there's going to be more thermal energy and probably proportionally more light energy as well. Questions? All right, let's look then at number four. And number four, there is a series of seven different light bulbs that are connected in series and parallel. So what I want you to do 
is, first of all, give a definition of series and a definition of parallel, and then define which one, and then list which combinations are connected in series and which combinations are connected in parallel. So I want you to work individually here for a minute or so. If they had the same current, but they don't. Oh. But but isn't the current the reason that there's oh, okay, okay. All right, explain to your neighbor in words what a series connection is, what a parallel connection is, and then which of these light bulbs, all possible combinations of series and parallel. one of them, because that would be connected end two, three, four, are there any other series connections? One and then the whole group and then seven. Okay, that would be another uh, one, and then we have this whole group, right, of six plus five plus two plus three plus four and then seven. If this all was one equivalent resistor, that would be one, 
would be in series with this big combination, which is in series with seven. Any others? Okay, so when I have a series connection, <clears throat> there's going to be a total amount of, there's a total energy, or the total change in voltage as I go from this point to this point has to equal the change in voltage across this one plus the change in voltage across this one, right? Or if we think in terms of current, whatever current goes through the first one has to equal the current that goes through the second one. So if we apply charge conservation here, what we get is that the total resistance is just we add them together when they're in series. All right, now how would you define parallel connection? Yes, well, They're fed by like a common input and then like their outputs feed a common output. Fed by a common input and then have a kind of uh, common output. So they're, their ends, their opposite ends are, in a sense, wired together. Mm -hmm. All right, now, which one of these combinations would be in uh, parallel? Yes? 6, 5, and then 2, 3, 4. 6, 5, and then the combination of 2, 3, 4. 6, 5, and then that combination of 2, 3, 4. <clears throat> All right, now, since they're actually wired together, if I have a certain amount of current that's coming in on this side. I have to have the same amount of current coming out on this side even though it splits. Even though it splits uh, across the parallel. So in this case, they don't have the same current going through them, each of those resistors. They could have different amounts of current. For instance, imagine this resistor had a very, very large resistance. This branch is going to draw less current more of the current would go in this direction uh, with the smaller resistance. Right, but what they do have is, let's say a certain, some charge went this way and it lost a certain amount of energy and had a certain delta V across this resistor. Well, delta V, potential difference is just how many joules of energy is lost per coulomb of charge. So whether I go this direction or that direction, the change in voltage has to be the same. Right? So when we apply that, what we get is the total resistance, or the reciprocal of the total, is just adding the reciprocals of the individual uh, resistors together. Now, not all, so the strategy would be to break a circuit or simplify a circuit down into equivalent <laughs> resistances of series and parallel combinations and then look at uh, individual branches. All right, let's look now at number five. And number five is a series circuit. All right, so what I want you to do is think about, we'll answer those two questions there. We'll work on that quietly for a moment. Okay, discuss with your neighbor, and then we'll look at what happens here. But also, you also want to ask the question, which one of those bulbs will be brighter? So two has a larger resistance than one, right? Bulb two has a larger resistance than one. 
Yeah, so current, so light bulbs don't use, or resistors don't use current, they dissipate energy. They dissipate electrical energy. They convert that electric potential energy as the electrons tumble from, well, electrons tumble from low to high electric potential. Conventional current, flow of positive charge goes from high potential to low potential. So as electric energy is converted or transformed into thermal energy and light energy. Uh, so, but the amount of charge doesn't go anywhere. It would, the only way to lose charge would be to boil electrons off of the wire. Like, for example, having a hole in a hose where it can leak out. Right? So this is one of the rules for circuits is, and there's only a few rules. One of them is this junction rule, which basically says whatever current comes in, has to equal the current that goes out. And this is really nothing more than a statement of charge conservation. Okay. All right. Uh, now, which one of these bulbs will have or compare, let's compare now the voltage across bulb one and bulb two. <coughs> How did those voltages compare? Yes. Uh, voltage across two is only greater than voltage across one. Why is that? Because uh, uh, V equals IR, and if there's uh, the same amount of current going through both, and two has a greater resistance than voltage across two. Okay, so which one's going to be brighter? What does, which one will be brighter then? Two. Two. All right, so let's just, just confirm. Okay, so two has a larger resistance. Two has a resistance of 20.5 ohms. One, I set it to be 10 ohms. And then let's just check the current. The current into one is 0.3 amps. And the current into two Uh, 0.3 amps. <clears throat> right, so they have the same current, but number two is dissipating more energy because there's a larger potential difference across number two than number one when they're connected in a uh, series. All right, now let's look at number six here. Number six is the same two light bulbs, but we're putting them in parallel uh, versus uh, series here. So take a moment, just write in your prediction for number six.
compare your prediction with your neighbor. All right, let's compare the currents here. Can someone compare the current for me between both one and two with an explanation? Thoughts? Yes. I think the current in bulb one is going to be less than in bulb two. Why? Um, because the uh, because the loop rule, the, the voltage has to be the same. So for a smaller resistance, it's going to have a smaller current. Okay. So let's uh, let's see here. Let's see, I think I have it wired correctly. Just connected to the ends of the terminal. Okay. So one has a larger current. Why does one have a larger current? Yes. Uh, with the equals IR relationship, we have to achieve the same voltage drop going two different paths. The voltage are going to be equal since your resistance on one is smaller, and the current is going to be greater. Okay, so the path with least resistance would be more favorable for the charges to want to move in that direction. So let's see, what if the battery is if the voltage of the battery is nine volts. What should be the voltage drop across bulb number two? Nine volts. What should the voltage drop across bulb one be? All right, so that's correct. Now, why? Why are they all the same? Yeah, right. Because um, the leads on the left side, which are connected to the uh, negative terminal, are it's a conductor. So on a conductor, the um, potential should be the same. And if it, on the other side, it's the same thing, the potential should be the same. So there's no place where the uh, potential difference could change. It all has to be the same potential drop. OK, so this, now one thing that's a little tricky here is that this is, a, it's a conductor that's not in equilibrium, so to speak, which would mean it's not equipotential. However, these wires, we're considering them to be ideal or perfect conductors, meaning they have zero resistance. So really, if this side of the battery is uh, nine volts higher than this side of the battery, then that means everywhere along this wire will also be, uh, if this is nine volts, it'll be nine volts all the way along this wire right here because it has zero resistivity. The only drop will actually take take place across the bulb itself. So this rule is really a, this is the other rule for circuits, which is called uh, Kirchhoff's loop rule. And all of this rule says is, if I sum up all the changes in voltage around a loop, I have to get zero. Now this rule is really a statement of energy conservation. Okay, so for that circuit that we have on the screen, if I was to plot the change in voltage versus the distance, <clears throat> Notice that the direction that the electrons are moving in this circuit is uh, in the clockwise direction, but can, that would be the electron current. Now conventionally we say current is just the flow of positive charge. We say one amp, one coulomb per second, would actually be traveling in, in uh, uh, the counterclockwise direction in this case. So typically when we say current, we're just talking about conventional current is the flow of positive charge, even though we know for conductors, it's actually the, the electrons themselves that are moving. 
very, very slowly, of course, but they're, they're the ones that are actually drifting through as they bump, a, bump into the ions, uh, or the lattice ions as they, as they move through the circuit. So if you were to plot the voltage versus distance, the first thing that happens is the battery, let's, let's say distance, let's talk about distance in the uh, counterclockwise. So if I start on the bottom left corner, the first thing that happens is I cross the battery. Now does that battery increase the voltage or decrease? Increase. In fact, increases by nine volts. All right, then let's say I go around uh, path number one, which is the big path around the top. When I cross that battery, I get a, or when I cross that top light bulb, I get a potential decrease of nine volts. Right, and then I've reached again the place where I started again. Now you can add in, so this is only, now regardless of which path I take, this was path number one, but if I took path number two, it would have to bring me back down to zero again. So that's all the, the loop rule says is regardless of which path you take, you always get back to uh, the, point, the, the place where you started out to begin with, right? All right, so these rules that we have on the board the junction rule, the loop rule, how to combine resistors in series and parallel. If we take that in combination with Ohm's law, which says the amount of current that's drawn is equal to delta V over R. Those are, in essence, all the equations we need uh, to solve any circuit problem. Um, it'll just be applying uh, these, these basic equations here. <clears throat> All right, so let's, take, let's look at an example now. I'll go back to uh, where we were. Now, when you actually build a circuit, you're not necessarily going to, it's not necessarily going to look exactly like this. This is what we call a schematic. Right. So the different circuit elements that we have, uh, these are just the schematics, just to make it, it simpler to uh, sketch. All right, so let's take an example here. If you could get out your voting cards. Junction is just wherever the current can spread. So take a moment to prepare your vote. All right, does anyone need more time? Just a moment here. Everyone's vote. All right, uh, D is correct. Right? How many amps are heading out from that junction? Eight are heading out. So, right in the picture, we have seven heading in. So we need one more heading in in order for there not to be a buildup or a pileup at the junction itself. Now, you might ask the question: You know, when charge is flowing through a circuit, how does it know how to divide itself up exactly? Well, in reality, what happens is, is when the charge reaches a junction, when current comes into a junction right here, we've got to think of a microscopic process that's really going on. If more charge started to go down one path versus the other, that would create a buildup, say, of positive charge. That buildup of char positive charge would act like a plug and cause the current to slow through that and to balance out into either. In, into the other paths as well, right? So as the, as the electric field kind of guides 
its way through the wire. We have a buildup of that ch surface charge, that non-uniform surface charge guides that, the charge through the wire. But uh, that's, that's what would actually happen is if too much charge goes one way, it kind of creates a plug and kind of diverts it the other way, and it, it balances out. It balances out on average when we're talking about I as I total, right? But if you were to just track an individual electron, you would find that, you know, it's kind of, uh, everything's kind of bouncing around very, very quickly here, right? But on average, and that's what these quantities really are, they're average quantities. We're talking about billions and billions of electrons. One coulomb is about six billion billion electrons. So one amp, which is one coulomb per second, is about six billion billion electrons per second passing a point. Uh, so that's a large amount of current uh, in a typical handheld electronics device. We're dealing with micro amps, right, which is still six billion um, electrons, though, but a billion times less than an amp. All right, now. Sometimes circuits look the same, but uh, they behave differently. So take a moment to discuss with your neighbor which of these four represent the same circuit. <coughs> Okay, go ahead and discuss with your neighbor which of these four is really the same as another one, or which of them are the same as each other. then I guess you can just show me the white side. Okay, so I have, looking at some of the combinations, I have A and D, I have A, B, D. A, B, D seems to be the most popular, so that is correct. A, B, and D represent the same, represent the same uh, circuit. C is not really the same, is it? Because the positive side of the battery is connected into the resistor, but it's not connected into, it's, all, it's not also connected into the capacitor, uh, right? But here it's connected into the capacitor and the resistor, capacitor and resistor, capacitor and resistor. So schematically those pictures look differently, but we're talking about elect electrically A, B, and D would behave the same. Right? They're actually the same circuit. Questions? All right, <clears throat> unknown, I have an unknown circuit element on the right. <clears throat> Take a moment individually to prepare your vote. What would be the voltage across that unknown circuit element? show our votes. <clears throat> you take a moment to convince your neighbor of what should be the potential difference across the unknown circuit element in the direction of the current.
Argument for C and argument for D. Yes. Like the resistors take away 14 volts in the direction of the current, so you're only getting 12 volts in the direction of the current, so you need another 2 volts, so the change in voltage for the loop is zero. That's for C. Okay, so C, okay, is, so you're saying if I go around the loop, if I was to draw this picture, for this battery, or for this circuit, uh, this way is clockwise. All right, so the battery boosts me up 12. All right, then there's something unknown. Right, but then the next resistor drops me eight, and the next one drops me six. So whatever is there would have to boost you up another two volts. Up to 14. So this is battery number one. And then Here's R1. It's going to take you down to 6. And then R2 would take you back uh, down to 0. So if you add up all the changes, it has to bring, bring you to 0 overall. All right, so C would be the uh, correct one, plus 2 volts. Now, it's an unknown circuit element here. What could the, what should those possibilities could that unknown circuit element possibly be? Given you one, two, three, four, five, six different possibilities. Take a moment, give another moment to prepare your vote. Okay, on the count of three. Okay, discuss with your neighbor, and then we'll end on this question right here. Which of those possibilities is battery, some resistor, some capacitor, and well, some combination. So E is the correct. E is the correct. If you were showing all four colors. Now, which direction would that battery have to be orientated in that picture? What side would the positive terminal have to be on for the battery? Bottom. Now, 
if, if, if it was a charged capacitor, what side of the capacitor would have positive charge? Bottom. Right. Now, whenever you have a capacitor in your circuit, the current isn't constant. Right? We'll, we'll get to that um, next week. Not on Friday, but next week. But yeah, if, I put, if, there, if it was a capacitor here, your current would be constant. If it was a battery, it would be a constant current. All right, so you want to turn in your homework. And for chapter 27, chapter 28 homework, we'll be due next Wednesday. And I'll see you either in lab or in lecture. You or up You keep that. Even though it says hand it in, just keep it. Take it. Uh, yes. Do you have your lab from yesterday? You can turn that in as well. There's a separate file. Um, I have to turn in like four more problems.